Ladies and Germans, how are you all doing? I am Connor. And I'm Rang Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, with Season 2 uh, kind of wrapping up overall with the League, the Steel Division action continues. We're actually going to take a look over at Herr Roberts, who's a super awesome tournament here. And in fact, we see some great players matching up at some great games. On today's Colville, Rang, who is duking it out? Well, on the left-hand side in blue, we have ourselves Corbo as the 101st Airborne Division. And on the right-hand side, we have ourselves the Gonzo as the Rintound Division. Alright, so who takes the cake here? Will the uh, eagle take carry off the puppy, or is the puppy <laughs> gonna, gonna run his race? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Um... I mean, Rintown is kind of iffy, but they could probably do pretty well against 101st, because 101st isn't exactly tank heavy, so at the same time, Rintown doesn't have much infantry. I don't know, I, I honestly have no idea who can really come on top of this. I think it's a rather even matchup. And I do want to note, this is Corbo mm -hmm. who's playing here. So, of course, he's using a light tank for us with four M22 Locusts. And that's what I was going to make the comment about as well, is that we don't often see too many M excuse me, M22s. Nope. In fact, for that matter, we don't tend to see a lot of Screaming Eagles out there. They are nope. endangered and all that. Um, so how are they going to match up against the early light vehicles of the Vintown Division? Uh, well, the Panzer Free pretty much kicks its ass. It's, it's, it has the first one, she has the armor, has the AP advantage. The M22 Locust can still kill the Panzer Free to mm -hmm. get a bit closer. But it's going to be interesting to see what Corbo does with this light tank push. It's no third Fauciger, uh Italian meme rush, but um, I guess we we'll see. And we got he's just got like a few AB rifles and probably maybe yeah, probably all AB rifles, and that's really it. it's a very basic deployment yeah, for mm -hmm. Corbo. While Gonzo seems like it's going to be going very heavy down south. Indeed. Indeed. Actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to make a quick comment. Folks, mm -hmm. if you start to hear rumbles in the background, um, th I mean, the party's rocking here. Don't come knocking, but it's actually thundering and lightning outside. So just, you know, it's a dark and stormy night when this is going on. Let's just make sure. I just want to, you know, yep. on the off chance you think I'm killing somebody in the background. <laughs> My alibi is I'm here recording with you. Yeah, it's so, very, very frightening. It is. It is. Galileo's got something to do with it. Um, I think what I was trying to talk about before, though, is that the locusts against the you know, the 232 with a pack track to the north, of course, against infantry handheld kind of AT, those locusts aren't going to go uh, do very particularly well. But mm -hmm. how about with, you know, the, the Puma, you know, the, the wannabe Pumas or the pack tracks? How, do, how does that stack up? Uh, I don't know. It really just comes down to who can shoot who first. I mean, the M20 Locust, it's, it's just a, it's an alright little light vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's just not, it's not, it's not the best because it has so low armor yet really anything can stun it up rather easily, even like high explosive mortars and infantry support guns. But yeah, be rifles are pushing through, and yeah, it's got them in two groups essentially. And up north, a single pack track alone is not going to be enough to deal with those M22s. No, it is not. And I can tell you what else: we have our first death actually on the field. That the half track going down the center part of the pitch. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're actually having both a 232 as well as an anti-tank gun. Of course, the anti-tank gun may run afoul of the ZB rifles. Yeah. Yeah, but I think he's... Oh, yeah, he... No, he's... I think he's just going to dodge it, actually, just by nicking south of the town. Ooh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Well, that original math was going to take him to the north, but nope, he's going to come down to the middle. And the interesting thing about this is I feel like both units are playing exactly how we'd expect them to play. Mm -hmm. uh, Vintown is trying to push the flanks. And the Screaming Eagles are trying to take that center central position. Yes, they are. And Gonzo, he can make some pretty good hydra down south. As Corbo has left his southern flank very exposed. And the AB rifles has pinned down. Half tracks going to get surrender. And they're going to be getting some reinforcements down south to try to stop his light vehicle push. That's going to be really good for Gonzo. Yo, Corbo is repositioning some of his locusts. Yes, but like you said, he's going to be going down to try to match up with the Panzer III. He might get this first half-track pretty darn easily here, mm -hmm. um, especially since he didn't really have him moving with that kind of A-move. Um, regardless, P3 now sees the lead Locus, and will he take... Yep, internal fragments. So yep. that's that guy's completely useless already. Yep. Question is how long he just continues to soak for the guy in the back. Oh, but a Mustang comes in as well, so that's, that's a nice play. 
Yeah, it's gonna drop some bombs. Oh though. my god, oh, that was almost wow. Fifty-seven. Yeah. No, it wasn't even fifty-seven mil. That was the locust. I get. Was it the locust no, no, or was I, it the I Mustang? Think, I think the fifty-seven millimeter gun was in range. You know, the fifty-seven. The fifty-seven has fired one shot though and took out the half track. Oh. He's had fired two now. He's fired two rounds and hit two half oh. tracks. Well, I must have been locust. What the hell? Man, that half track. That gun is insane. Three shots, three kills, and the entire southern flank wow. is now wide open. Wow, that was that ran the... from like ten to zero in like twenty seconds. Oh yeah, I was totally gonna say that that fifty-seven millimeter is definitely zero to hero. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, there's not a whole lot of units on the map for either player. If you look to the north, the locusts were getting completely crushed mm -hmm. by that two fifty ten. And in, in fact, yeah, the, the Panzer truck has absolutely no rounds fired. Um, the Pack thirty has only got two. I don't know. It feels like there's going to be like a punch drunk fight where they're just like boxers just laying into <laughs> each other, you know? Yeah, both sides have been manned to get some rather efficient trades, and Corbo hasn't been able to, you know, really make a ton of headway with his usual light vehicle play. Yo, know, yeah, it's just, it's just kind of crazy back and forth. We've got another Panzer Free coming in down south, as well as a Mobile Wagon, which will mobile in over to Rivich Wagon. To shoot down mm -hmm. planes. I was trying to make a joke here, but I have no bloody idea. Oh, well, you know what? Sometimes you just have to move a little wrong, and um, that was actually no better. So let's, let's just continue on with let's the game, shall continue. we? <laughs> let's just continue. Um, it is interesting to me that we've seen very little infantry overall. You were right to point out that the Vintown doesn't have a ton of it. Mm -hmm. But even more bizarre to me is that the Airborne has not been really trying to push that advantage. No, it's just got a few AB rifles out. I'm, and I'm guessing Gonzo, he might have a bit more of a heavy B phase infantry lineup of 101st. I'm not entirely Gonzo or sure. Corbo? Uh, Corbo, Corbo, my bad. Okay, I just wanted to just double check, alright. Yeah. But, um, I know it really all depends. For Gonzo, of course, you've only got four pounds grenadiers on A phase, but you do have two self edge and she. Mm -hmm. At the same time, AB rifles do hold up pretty well against Panzer Grands. Panzer Free coming around the corner. And one shot, one kill. There we Bam. go. And the 57 mil is pinned down as well, so it looks like the P3 will have a lease on life, at least for a short bit of time. Mm -hmm. You could definitely use a mortar down south to try to help, you know, just pluck off those positions. And weapons jammed? Oh my gosh. Yeah. The vehicles in this have just been completely devastated. Criticals galore. Drivers mm -hmm. knocked out in the P3. But you should get the finishing blow. No, he's, he's aiming no. for the locust to the north. Yeah. Which I completely, I completely agree with, too. And here comes the six pounder coming back online. And backing away. Yeah, good call. Now, I, I am kind of stunned to discover that Corbeau was picking up. I kind of really would have expected Gonzo to have the, the territory advantage. Mm -hmm. But man, that, that higher side must be absolutely insane. And yep. here's another gun run. He's going after the Pack 38? No, is he going after. Um, no, Pack 38. Pack, pack 38, yep, and it goes down. Damn, good kill. Those Mustangs are really paying themselves off. Yeah, and there's that mortar that you were talking about. Mortar half track coming on in is going to be able to shift down to the south, get some good cover fire out. If nothing else, there's a lot of infantry that's just begging to be shot. Yeah, yeah, but it's just such a huge clump of infantry that Corbo has. The Panzer III is trying to hold him down, but 57mm is doing some serious work, and he comes another locust. Try and finish Bees. it off, and kaboom. He's got four kills. He's got four kills. <laughs> it's a good AT gun. Yeah. Very good AT gun. I'm just stunned because I've never seen an AT gun do, do that much damage. I'm stunned up. Yep. Um, I've never seen an AT gun do that much damage for the 101st. They, they come in, they die. They come, mm -hmm. they die, they leave. That's how it works. Yeah. I mean, not having a mortar definitely is hurting Gonzo quite a bit, and he's going to be resolving that issue by bringing out a mortar half track. Yes, unfortunately for him, though, that gives time to get Corbeau to bring in two more 57 mils mm -hmm. and, and uh, officers to make them nice and vetted, as well as some covering infantry. Oh, yeah. And that AT gun might go down here, but he's taking one last guy with him. They're hungry yeah. first. Like, Corbeau has a very good defensive division, I say. He has a lot of his AB rifles, a lot of his AT guns. He can hold pretty damn well overall, I'd say. Especially, uh, I'd say especially against Rintown, but Rintown is just, with Rintown you have to have very good trades, as you really can't afford to be losing many units. Like, losing those two Panzer 3s 
I'd say is a rather big deal already for Gonzo, as you really need to try to keep every single just piece of armor you have alive. We just note that the 37 mil jumped in, fired one round, and took out the Mubo Falcon. Not didn't kill it, <laughs> but internal fragments, which might as well Oof. be the same thing. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's going to uh, keep it offline for now. It is still being shot at by this 37 mil. Oh yeah, of course. But uh, we do have two of those AT guns to the south are gone. Mm -hmm. um, now, I don't think we're in the Argon Forest, but... And there was another stillborn joke. Um, but we are seeing this Mortar Half-Track is, like you said, paying himself off rather handsomely. At yep. least staving off any big push uh, by the Americans in the south. And, and here comes the, you know, the, the Mustang. He's going after the Mortar Half-Track. And he might even just kill it with this. Oh, no. Thankfully, he doesn't. Uh, and that Mortar Half-Track lives to write home another day. Yeah. I think, yeah, for Gonzo, he's definitely need more, like, high-explosive fire support. Rampanoo. The Panzer III is pretty mediocre in that regard, but he definitely needs more of his mortars, auto cannons, all that stuff. His, you know, AB-130, it's all rather light armor. And, of course, AA. He's... He's going to want to stop at AA, or he's going to need at AA to stop the planes that will eventually be coming in huge, huge raves. Yes, they will. Now, this 234 coming into the north, actually the center part of the field, he might be able to take out this Locus. Should be able to. There we go. There we go. Auto cannon wins the day. Um, now, I'm trying to... Oh, maybe rifle gets in nice and close. Zook? No Zook, just get no out Zook. just barely in time. Well done. That was that was a nice uh, heads up mm -hmm. play there. Heads up play. Well done. Um, but uh, like you said, oh, now it's a thunderbolt. Okay, so it doesn't seem to matter. I don't think he's gonna be able to get enough AA up and running. He's got another mobile vacuum coming on in the center part of the field. But he's still gonna be subjected to constant bombing runs. Yeah. I really want to note with the P-47 Thunderbolt, he actually turned off, like, one of the bombs and only dropped two bombs instead of three. Okay. Which is, I don't know, it's a, it's a rather interesting play instead of just dropping all three. I well, think, that doesn't, like, that doesn't reshorten the reload time, does it? I think it does. It does, actually. I'm fairly certain it does. I think oh, he was maybe yep. planning to, like, bomb one area and bomb another, but he couldn't find a good target, so he just fell back. Fair enough. Um, we did see that the other 234 has taken out two locusts now, so now the Germans have a beautiful 5% advantage here, mm -hmm. um, which is shocking. It's actually stunning to me to see a vehicle control that much territory. Of course, especially the recon optics, that is a match made in heaven for the Vintown division. Yep, all he needs is these light vehicles, these fire support to really just take your advantage, and artillery to blow up his goddamn AT guns, which are coming in, as Corbo is getting a lot of them. Yes, but that's going to be my question. So the meme machine, how does he fight back against this? Oh, cool, bro. Other, other, other than getting the, the god-like 57 millimeters, apparently. I think pushing up north would be Corbo's real best bet. It's more close range. It works well for his infantry. Your locust is pretty good in that area. Well, the more open field fight, Gonzo really has advantage. As of course, later game, he can get panthers and... He's got, like, mobile artillery, where all of pretty much all the 101st artillery is static. And also airplanes is really Corbo's big advantage, and Corbo's been doing a really good job just bombing the crap out of everything. Indeed. But now with two mobile wagons on the field, mm -hmm. uh, he does get the bombs off, but it's going to get less and less hospitable. Yeah. And indeed, he goes away trailing some smoke. Not a ton, but a little bit. Yeah. Have you noticed? I I don't I don't think Corbo has got a single recon unit, like in no he hasn't at all. That is, he's only he's only been buying AB rifles this entire time. Not even AB engineers. Just just AB. Has this been AB rifles? AT well, he's guns, got gliders and then too. 22s. Oh, it's some glider rifles now. Yep, glider okay, rifles yep. are coming in. Like there's first squad to the north, and I imagine he's just using this to clog up the northern flank. Yep. I, I bet you Corbo's infantry loadout is just all the AB rifles he can take, and then all the glider rifles he can take. Just keep it simple of like two or three different infantry units. I wish I could be surprised as well. Now the 234 yeah. does get forced into a very, very quick surrender just because yeah. of poor pathing. Um, so well done there. That's a very heads-up play by Corbo. Mm -hmm. Down to the south, 
we have some more German infantry coming in. Are we seeing Yopel Blitz maybe moving up to start reloading all of his infantry? Probably not, but he does get at least some more rounds into that mortar half track. Yeah. He desperately need those. And right. Vinthound is bringing on in their first plane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did the same thing with Woman Run. He just turned off one of the bombs, so I think that's this for reload time thing. I'm a little confused why the ME109 didn't press the advantage there. Uh, I think he's wasn't fast enough to catch up to the Thunderbolt. There's, there's a thought. Yeah, good point. Thought troops are Winchester pretty much. Uh, Pentagon Deers are Winchester and MG42. Alright. Um, oh, outside of that, outside of that, things are stabilized quite nicely, I would say, for both players. We're back mm -hmm. to 50-50 split. Um, and there's a mere, what, f about 400, 300 tickets um, separating? I mean, that's that's that's... Nothing. That's peanuts, man. That's two minutes. Yeah, it's really crazy. It's still rather close. This is still anyone's game. And even though we're going to get, like, C-Phase eventually, neither side a great C-Phase division, so it's still a rather even matchup. So, it's, yeah, it really is quite interesting. Well, of course, with uh, the 101st, those Eagles do get more guys coming into the nest, right? As the a couple of DD tanks come off the beaches, right? Yeah, they got some DD tanks, uh, a few Wolverines, no mm -hmm. Corbo. He probably has two Star Wolverines, which are rather deadly threat. And I'm guessing once all his AB rifles start dying, because he must be running low of him by now, this is going to be glider rifle spam. Okay, and, uh, but though at the same time, what about for the Greyhounds? Oof, uh, it's just going to be pretty average, you know, some more Panzer Grand, maybe some Pioneers, a few Panzer Fours, the old Panther. This is just a regular ring town to play, really. Maybe Gonzo focus a bit more on getting more light vehicles, Nordic Cannon stuff, as that seems to be working pretty well for him. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I'd be actually quite surprised, maybe surprised if we see a Panther. I know it all depends, because the Panther isn't great infantry fire support but if you know wolverines and a lot of shamans are brought out it's definitely a good unit to have sound about right more p grants moving in now interestingly we haven't seen really any pioneers either from gonzo's troops yeah yeah it's rather interesting both sides have been sticking to uh like a one infantry man show <laughs> You know, oh, just man. Make, just keep it nice and simple. I dig it, man. I love uh, it when um, I can make a deck and I just like have like the least variety of units in that deck. Well, it moves a lot of. Oh, never mind. Pioneers now onto the field. Um, okay. <laughs> well, it does. It does move an awful lot of hassle in terms of trying to yeah. figure out what I really want to do with each kind of troop. Well, you know how much mm -hmm. your infantry is. You know what they're going to be do well. And you know where they're going to get shot up. So yeah, yep. I guess you're right. Yeah. I hear you, man. You be jamming. 50 50 splits and pioneers are going to move in and take out this first squad of rifles and i would think at that point germans could threaten a plus one mm -hmm. i think he's managed to put a, quite a bit of pressure i mean up north his pentagon days are doing some pretty good work one on one against these ab rifles as you're saying and yeah he's got a decent amount of aa now he's managing to stun up his thunderbolts even stop and run dropping his bombs so well, oh damn damn yeah south. he still picks up a brace of kills to the south yeah it was pretty good that was a really good bomb and run yeah uh so definitely the answer is more aa then make a blanket of flax so thick you could walk on it riri sounds about right now, um, this has absolutely nothing to do with anything. It's just, I first think of the Gebolte Ledungs. Um, there's some random movie I discovered, mm -hmm. I think. Okay. Fin Finn's fighting the Russians back in the, the with the, the paper, the toilet paper war. The fake war. If it goes to the paper war, I forget what they called it back in the 34. 30, 34, 39? Yes. Yeah, the Winter War. The Winter War. I thought it was, I thought it was a much more derogatory term than that. It's really interesting to see it actually get used live. I mean, Put that kind of in quotes there. Um, I can only imagine the kind of devastation these things caused overall. And indeed, we see it's going to be happening against these airborne rifles in the yep. center part of the map. Pin Kaboom. down, eight guys go down, and the last guy very wisely surrenders before the Death Star gets a chance to fire again. Yeah. Uh, but CGMC being brought on in. Where's that going? It's going to center part of the pitch. And um, can't argue with that kind of result. No, I definitely makes definitely a pretty good idea. I think he's just getting that one out just to protect his planes from being chased down by fighters. God almighty. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen even these 
bombs be that efficient? Yeah, P forty seven Thunderbolt drop some big kaboomies. Yeah, but you know, and I and I would say size definitely does matter, but I did not expect it to be quite that devastating. I know, it's it's I'm actually quite surprised. And he's just doing dropping two bombs and leaving Ron hanging still. So I think that's really affecting his reload time. You know, he's doing all three on his uh, more half track down south and takes that out too. Jesus Christ. Jesus New 109 in the meantime, they get absolutely nothing done with the CGMC out as well. Um, it's going to chase away all that uh, Axis air power. Yeah, I mean, usually for 101st, they're not really killing that many ground units. There's force and surrenders, but. Well, I guess yeah. Gonto's using a lot of light vehicles. He's managing to nab quite a few light kills. Yo, it's looking pretty good up north for Gonto. As uh, his half track and Pandagon is are making steady progress, and there's really not much out to stop him. No, there isn't. Like you said, though, we still neither real real squad is really looking for a whole lot from that C phase. Watch, here comes another set of bombs, and watch him die. Mm -hmm. Here, he's still on a move. He's a he's a nifty little half track. I was like, dodge and weave, boys, dodge and weave. <laughs> um, but more, yep, yeah, actual legit Mustangs being brought on in as well to go after the ME109, yep. and both actually, ooh, both are going after him. That's an interesting call. And Furball has commenced an ME109 with a G. Oh, jeez, oh, the Geo's a garbage. Yeah, he's gonna get. He's, I think we get both. There's one. Maybe. Never mind. Nope. Mustangs are a bit too fast for him. But knocking out every plane is gonna be vitally important for Gonzo to try to curve call both aerial advantage. But yeah, plus two now for Gonzo. This is going really well for him. Indeed, though, we are gonna have a Stuart coming into the north, so that might get reversed awfully fast. Yeah, it's not really any ATF north, though, that's the thing. Handheld, basically. Yeah, it's just down to the pan's gonna do, getting that Panzer Faust off. Well, the humorous thing as well is that we had a Panzer Shrek squad. The Panzer Shrek has been there since the absolute beginning of the game. Oh, yeah. Fired no rounds, has used no Shreks. Not a lot of anti tank terror, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's his, it's his time to sign now, I guess. I got your shine box right here. Yeah, it's time to Shrek. Um. Mike Myers not included. Another <laughs> another CGMC being brought on in. What mm -hmm. happened to the last one? Did I'm assuming get... it went down, but I don't know why. I haven't. Oh, never mind. There it no, is. no, it's, mind. Yeah, no, no. it's behind the supply truck. Yep. Now the 37 millimeter pop guns, um, those continue to go down, but they've actually done. They've pulled their weight, which is mm -hmm. not saying much, but they've still pulled their weight. Still pretty impressive what they have managed to do. Yep. Just keeping wind down at bay down south, yo. Yeah, up north, this is this sort of real big collapse for Corbo, and he's just losing lots of points. And it's going to be rather tough for him to take his back up north, as it's just a lot of forest and tree lines you have to fight through, and that takes time. And, I, I mean, Corbo still has time, but not yet much time to try and push back. And look, Gonzo managed to shoot down enough with aer an aeroplane. Well, I was going to try to make a couple different jokes there, but I will say, you know what, um, he does have time, but I'm not going to say it's on his side, mm -hmm. nor will I say it's the final countdown. Um, and we're all fighting in Europe. True. True. Exactly, exactly true. Yep. Uh, Pioneers to the north. Ooh. Okay, so Stuart, he's going to be coming down this road right oh. into the teeth of the Shrek squad. Always. Oh, He'll be coming around the mountain when she I'm comes. Oh my gosh, she's going to be like 30 meters away. Yep. <laughs> one shot, one kill. Wow. <laughs> Damn, that oh, was that was man. good because that Stuart was really the main thing. The world's main threat there is also a S M fifteen coming in up north, and that's arguably a bit more of a threat due to its high explosive capabilities. True, but even at that point, I can just take a mortar and I start shelling that, which is exactly what's going to start happening here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, not for nothing, but it is C phase, so there is that first Tiga. No, oh, not Tiga. Panther. Wow. Panther. Yeah. Wow. Um, it's been a little bit of time since we've had to be able to cast one of these. <laughs> I've not been keeping up with my silhouettes. My first thought was, tigers and lions and bears, oh my. Um, now there's Stuart in the center, but as there is also an M10 coming in as well. Oof, Interesting. Yeah. So, two-star M10 versus mm -hmm. Panther. Uh, we're going to be a rather interesting matchup. Panther has slight advantage just due to armor and AP. But it all depends. I mean, Panther's probably just going to get like stunned by some bombs. It's 101st. It's going to happen. I would not be surprised by that, no. Ooh, Shrek Squad's going to get a second kill here. Oh. Yep. 
Oh! Yep. Yep. Damn, that's, might die, that's, but, you know, that's he... Shrek Squad, you know, he's just been waiting for his opportunity, and he's managed to make it count. Yes, he has. Damn. I actually, I'm kind of surprised that the spot troops are getting stuck in as much as they have as well. Usually spot yeah. troops, you see recon guys kind of go forward, skulk it out, and then never move again. Mm -hmm. That it's, has not been happening here, though. It's been using them as frontline combat troops. Uh, bomb and run down south on the Mopo Dragon, and run up north on the infantry. Mm, is it okay? Yeah, okay. Yep. That's a shame, too, because that guy just got in here, too. Mm -hmm. And a third plane coming on in, flying combat air patrol, and ME-109s, I don't think are really too keen on getting stuck in. Yeah, that's really good, Joe. The, the planes dropped the bombs now, because the Panther is about to reach the front line, so that's going to mm -hmm. give... Gonzo, a nice window of opportunity of being able to do stuff without being bombed to smithereens. And he's engaged in the M10. First shot, wrap and jam. Shall we go? It's been so many crazy crits in this so far. Yeah, both sides have just been going absolute back and forth tank rise. Especially in that early engagement area. It has been bananas. Unless the weapons will be unjammed in a pretty quick hurry as a supply truck desperately trying to get him fixed up in that motor pool. Mm hmm. He's being helped out by that teeny, tiny little anti, you know, panther sightline gap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, isn't that what... <laughs> anti Sorry, just anti-panther sightline gaps. I can just imagine, like, a bunch of allied troops just setting up, like, a giant blind. And just oh, yeah. Anti-panther. Oh, yeah, it was like a, they're talking about anti-panty. So. Anti-panty. <laughs> anti Not from American GI yeah. World War Two. No, no, man, they were yeah. all about the panties. At that oh, point. M10's going to get first shot, yo. Should've and oh, yep, should like, wounded. Yeah, you're definitely right about all these goddamn crits. Corbo knows he has an opportunity. You know, the shooter's going to be able to get back on line just in the nick of time. Mobile Ragon's going to give some suppressive fire. And even, and you know what? Even giving up his life for that. Down. I mean, one or nine's going to sacrifice himself for the cause. He's going to chase him away, and the Panther is going to barely see. Oh my gosh, that's a beautiful little sight line there. Ooh. And it's back into the orchard very, very soon. One more shot, maybe? That is a tight line. Damn! It shouldn't even be legal. That's so... uh, I'm not sure. It's not legal in the north here. It might be legal down in Texas, though. What I can tell you, the CGMCs are doing a great job chasing mm -hmm. away those ME-109s. Um, leaving basically the ME-109 on the ground attack version, that little rinky-dink wannabe fighter. Yeah. He can go away. The turn rotation on the CGMC is absolutely nuts. One second he's firing down at the Southern Infantry <laughs> fight, and the next he's like, oh wait, airplane! <laughs> Another Thunderbolt run, he's and... He's a busy uh, man. Yeah, he's, he's a very busy man. He hasn't got all day. And there goes the front German line. Yeah. But this is still going really well for Gonzo. He has 13 minutes left, he's got a pretty big point lead, and he still has an author under his control, and of course that Panther, which is going to be a rather pain in the ass. As well as two Panzer IVs being brought in. Yes, sir. And more infantry to the north as well. I think more pioneers being brought in to kind of stave off a lot more of this. Another Panzer Shrek uh, shot does take out another CGMC. So he's probably going to go down, but he's paid for his life. Yeah, yeah. Dearly. That was definitely a really good investment. Probably, I don't know, I'd say MVP of the match so far. As these men, you know, to kill a lot of crap. I was going to say, still seeing the 57mm, or maybe one of those Thunderbolts. Oh, yeah, 57mm. That was definitely. Okay, I'd definitely agree with the 57mm. It's like one shot kill, one yep. shot kill, one shot kill. Absolute Terminator. Now, one thing that's also surprising to me, too, is that we see another CGMC being brought onto the north. And I can only imagine why is it that we've seen more AA from the Americans than the Germans? Yeah, I, I think if German AA just keeps getting blown up. It is rather interesting the way he's getting near so many GMCs, because Gonzo has only been buying fighters. Yes. Like, I'm guessing at the same time he's using them as fire support, because Gonzo's really just using a lot of infantry up north. So why, why, why not just have an infantry support vehicle also acts as an AA piece? Well, I'll tell you what, it's not a good idea. You have a P4, a Befela P4 coming up to the north. Mm-hmm. That's, that's leadership right there. That's a huge amount of armor. And as long as you can keep away people with the airborne rifle from him, he's going to be carving a bloody swath through the meme machine. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. The down south, 
Corbo, I think, and I think make a bit of a breakthrough. I know we got a Panzer IV coming in down south. But it yes, was a bit sir. of a window of opportunities. He could just rush that GMC up and just nab quite a bit of land. As Gonzo really has nothing down south at the moment. Mm -hmm. All P47 coming in. Going to be dropping in the big booms on the Panther. Nope, more than half track. Oh, more than half track. Okay. This, this, one, this one's on the Panther. Yep. And takes it out. What <laughs> the deuce? He pays for it, but you know what? He's going to go to his grave a happy man. <laughs> yeah, it was, those Thunder votes are insane. Like, damn. I really... That's, I, I'm really shocked and stunned by that strategy of just turning that run bomb off. But it definitely seems like I've been coming out much more often than, than usual. And much more accurate for that matter, too. I mean, yeah. CGMC to the north goes down, but who cares when you have all the freaking anti, you know, tank planes? Good gosh. Damn. And this is without rockets. This is no rocket attack. This is nothing. This is just raw HE domination. Yeah, just big bada booms. You're up north, Gondo. He's just going to make a breakthrough. He's got light vehicles. There's no AT to stop him. And yeah, he can just fast move through the enemy spawn, and that would. That would be a pretty bloody, pretty bloody deadly. Yep. Which means that you'll see a lot more planes to the north, which is just fine, because it means mm -hmm. there's no penetration to the south, then. Yep. It's definitely going to divert Corbo's attention for now down south. From mm -hmm. south up north, because he's already getting infantry up. We can almost be threatening a plus three here. I imagine, actually, if we take out both of these... Ladder rifles, we could see a plus three. Yeah, I think he's gonna do that. He's got the two five run uh, heading down south to try to nab. We just shy. Defenders. Just shy because he's oh. on the other side of the tree line, so they'll be fine. Yeah. LOS will keep them alive. I mean, two more squads moving on in. You can bet your sweet bippy there will be some anti tank in those. Question is, will they get there in time? Because a P four is moving right up the road as well, and that's just gonna crush anything that's coming down. Yeah. Unless, of course, he decides to back away the other direction. There we go. <laughs> Airborne Rifles kick it on off, though. These brave, brave guys standing in the middle of the road saying, you shall not pass. Nine. And the, and the, and the P4 says, dude, I'm 50 tons. <laughs> I got a whole lot of junk in the trunk. You don't want to be standing in front of me. Pushing to engage instead that next truck... Okay, and they make it out alive. Phew, lucky yep. for them. Oh, here comes the bombing run, and... Hey, at least it didn't kill him. Yeah, it's going to be one more bombing run that Panzer IV will be kaput, but it's going to at least give the AB rifle some time to fall back. But this is oh. no going around for Corbo now. I mean, his C, uh, his C phase... He's crumbled. Yeah, he's really crumbled. I mean, I want to say he has a worse C phase, but Rintown C phase is nothing really to write home about either. It's just Gonzo has managed to just get good territory control up north. And really good territory control. And not for nothing, you see some more infantry being brought down to the south into those broken bunkers. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, whether or not you tend to believe it, those are surprisingly good defensive fortifications. Oh, Green yeah. cover. The wide open in front of them is a beautiful field of fire. Yeah, and you can just like sneak a bunch of like Panzer Trek guys in there and right from get close and kaput. Yep. Yeah. Do what we did 250 years ago. Wait till you see the whites of their eyes and then you fire. Which is impressive. That's a pretty damn close for a tank. It's very damn close. Too bad there's no like more bunker positions to really take advantage of in Steel Division. Because there's not many maps that really have like these bunkers that you can use. It's always forests and towns. Because these are really cool bunkers if you zoom in. Yes, they are. And I, you know what? I keep hoping that we see more of that in Steel Division 2 Same. out sometime in 2019, as far as I understand. Uh, like March or something. Um, and we're going to see a P4 up to the north bouncing with that Stuart. Cracks and wheels destroyed. That's always so embarrassing for P4. Yeah. It's just as a, a light tank. Oh, jeez. He scampers in, he scampers out, he scampers in, he scampers out. He's not even getting the shot off. Stabilizers. No, no, no. I'm saying... The steward's ducking in and ducking I out know. so fast. That's... Stabilizers. Oh, so it's... that's that's the, the, the touch you were... Okay. Yeah. The, unfor the unseeing idea. That's where he's going to get the first shot off every time he moves forward, because stabilizers, man. Oh, as I say, stabilizers and shirts and shamans, it's such a, such a powerful advantage. 
and make some very, very scary units to fight against. But Gonzo, he's still, he has map control still. He's slow to get in a plus run. And in seven minutes, I doubt Corbo can get, you know, that much territory. Especially 101st, is a bit, a bit slow on the whole territory grabbing aspect. Yep, they're not particularly good at that, are they? Yep, um, perfect, don't you? These stewards, yes, that's true. Shooter knocked out to the north of the, the last buffet of the Panzer. Mm -hmm. And another one being brought on in some more infantry as well. Um, Panther to the south, you're absolutely right, and there's no AT down there either. But like you yeah. said, he's focused so hardcore to the north, he's got nothing that can stop this. Yep. It's gonna be, it's, I don't think Guns is gonna be quickly taking ground down south, as his Pandagon days are really gonna be the guys taking ground and they're a bit slow. But still, he's just applying pressure all over, and Gonzo's just doing really bloody well. Yes, sir. Mm hmm. Your Corbo's starting to match the other force, and he's trying to make breakthroughs up north and down south. Your doubt he's gonna get too far. That may be, but um, more planes up in the air. P 51 Mustang going up against two GOs. I don't think he's going to make it. Another ME 109 in there. Oh my gosh, there's just planes all over the place. Mm -hmm. Before it gets stopped, they surrender here, I imagine. This GMC starts moving troops in super fast. Yep, there we go. And yeah, the Panther gets his own. Excuse me, the Panther gets his own bit of revenge. Another bomber goes down. Oh, damn. Good kill. Very good kill from Gonzo. And this Mustang, he's uh, he's not long for this world. Yeah, fighting a 3 to 1 is not a particularly healthy way. Nope. Last 109 comes in for a deflection. And actually, he might be. Oh, so he was almost out of cannon ammunition. Once that goes, the machine guns are practically worthless. Um, But he takes him out. He takes him out. So there's the plus one over here for Corbeau. Unless there's a plus three, uh, it's, it's nothing's going to happen here. Yeah, this is pretty much buggered for Gonzo, I'd say. I mean, for Corbo, goddammit. I'm not I'm not tired. I'm 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 here. Oh, a nice little thing for our viewers to know is that uh, our good old friend Rangru here was playing as a rescue all weekend. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Iron Curtain fell hard on the people of NATO. Yes, they did. But a story for another time, perhaps. But damn, uh... But yes, more bunkers. More bunkers. More bunkers. Um, and actually, and you know what? They really should be having more of them on the Omaha map. I know! I Omaha... think it always, it always bothers me there's nothing on there. Yeah, it's a bit weird. It's just like the empty beach part. There's no, like, bunkers on... Yeah, it's really weird. I'm guessing they... The Omaha map is on another area of Omaha where it was less bunkery that they modeled it on. <laughs> not not dog green, basically? Yeah. yeah that's, that's a bit of a shame, actually, now that I really think about it. But, yeah. Or Point to Hawk, which should have bunkers all over the place <laughs> as well. But we, we haven't seen Point to Hawk in quite a bit of time, have we? No, 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 we have not. Uh, Do you think it's fairly safe to say at, like, 39.15 we go to plus two? Sure. I was going to say right now, I'm not for nothing, but I dare say that the rest of this game will be more of the same, unless we have a complete and utter collapse in times two. Oh, no. Uh, a complete and utter collapse of Gonzo. We, maybe Corbo's doing a Stuart thing. It's going to be way too late to really make anything happen, you know, but the Stuart thing's rather entertaining to watch. Yes, it is, but we saw the pack track and the mat in the middle of the... Ooh, never mind, he's backing up. P3. P3 is going to charge for some god-awful reason. And going to die equally confusingly. Martyr 3 moving in, Panther from the south. Um, as good as this is, a plus 2 and all that, again, plus 3 is what's needed here, and Shrek's galore yeah. coming on out. Heck, really a plus 4. No. There we go. Two, two stewards dead, and still a plus 2. But I guarantee you it's not going to be for long. Not for long. And Mortar Freeze coming in. That Stuart is... I mean, Stuart's probably going to get first shot on the Mortar Free, but... Unless it gets strafed a bit. Well, even if he does, who cares? You can just continue to throw troops at this constantly. Mm -hmm. There's only about a minute left, so that'll be more than enough, I would say. There we go. Crew there hit. We go. 
and watching all of these planes just circle in the air, kind of ineffectually firing at each other. Mm-hmm. There's one. So for Absolutely the scores, one, two to two to nothing. I really the fact that the Germans are have a couple of yeah. they're smoking all over the place. And Gonzo hasn't really lost any planes. I really ought to commend him for his air power game. I think he lost maybe one one oh nine, I'm not yeah. sure. But that's like really good considering he run against hundred and first and they have all those bloody Mustangs. Yes, sir. But damn, look at the uh KDs. A lot of kills between both sides. Surprised that both sides had that many points to lose. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, um, Gonzo got the slight point advantage. Looking at kills, yeah, AT gun, definitely worth right. its rate in gold. But wait, let's start counting air kills. Three, six, nine, um, ten. Yeah, the Panther got taken out by the Thunderbolt. Eleven. We had eleven air kills. Eleven. That's pretty good, especially knocking out Panther. Yeah, it's... That's really good. And damn, look at Stuart. Yeah. Mr. Jang. Yeah. Like, Bo Jang. Jeez. Like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> what like, you been eating, baby? Like, damn. That's a lot of kills. And losses real fast. Surprisingly, there's a couple of small standouts. The Panther got to, has five. He's bagged five. And I mean, 109's got four kills. He's almost an instant ace on this I map. I know. That's really good. Six air kills. Eight air kills. Damn. Jeez. That's... That's... That's, that's, that's impressive. Rough. That's, that's rough. rough. That's that's a... What? About what? About a half of the losses for the air? Excuse me, for the front and first? Maybe a third? Yeah, I'd say... I'd say... I'd say, yeah, a third to a half is actually not, yeah, unreasonable considering that's all the really expensive units for hunter and first is all the airplanes. You're not unreasonable, but still just insane. Yeah, it's insane. That is, like, it was really good for Gonzo Man to secure the air game with the little fighters that he has. Well, the little 109s, that could. Yep, yep. But, uh, yeah, it's a really good game from both sides. They played really well, a lot of pressure. And, you know, I mean, Corbo, when it comes to airborne divisions, I think he's more comfortable third foul Chager. Heck, even 91st. <laughs> yeah. But no L sixes today. No L um, sixes. So what have we got going on later this week, Ryan? I think we got player fighting Harry Spider for the next Ooh. run. All right, so folks, rub all those eight legs together because it's going to be a real match, I'm sure. But right now, though, we're going to be calling it quits. Well, I'm Con Ulrich. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.